Aloha. I'm your Minna Van Dyken MD from Out of the Doldrums. On this channel, we talk a lot about nitric oxide. We go into the nitty gritty. Today, we're gonna explore yet one additional facet of the nitric oxide story. We will be discussing the biggest nitric oxide reservoir in the human body, skeletal muscle. I know it sounds a little strange because we usually think of nitric oxide in the blood and the blood vessels and it's increasing blood supply to the body that way. Because of this, I was a little skeptical when I first heard about muscle being such a huge nitric oxide reservoir. But the data behind this is sound and we can use this knowledge to our advantage. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start with a brief review of the basics. Nitric oxide, often abbreviated as NO, is a small molecule with a significant impact on our health. It's a cellular signaling molecule that plays a pivotal role in various physiological processes. One recent paper even went so far as to call nitric oxide, quote, a master molecular regulator determining longevity and health span, end quote. Along those lines, we do know that continuous nitric oxide generation is essential for the maintenance of cellular function and our overall health. And we also know that older age and several chronic disease conditions are characterized by lower levels of nitric oxide. One of nitric oxide's most well-known functions is as a vasodilator. This means it has the ability to relax and expand our blood vessels, ensuring that oxygen and essential nutrients are efficiently delivered to tissues, especially during periods of increased demand, like exercise. Nitric oxide is a molecule that has a very short half-life, on the order of seconds. Once it's produced, it's used up really quickly, or it gets metabolized into other forms. So it's commonly converted back into nitrate and nitrite if it's not needed. So what does the body do with all this excess nitrate and nitrite? Well, it forms a reservoir. It saves it for a rainy day, for a day when we really need nitric oxide. So this nitrate and nitrate can be stored in our body and rapidly converted to nitric oxide when our body demands it. I like to think of nitrate and nitrite as ready mix ingredients for nitric oxide. It doesn't take much to convert it to nitric oxide right at the very instant our body requires it for its essential functions. Backing up even more, let's take a look at the really big picture. We can get nitrates from our diet. Great sources of dietary nitrates are beetroot, arugula or rocket, kale, lettuce, and spinach. These nitrates get converted to nitrites, NO2, and then back again to nitrates, NO3. These nitrates and nitrites get transported from our GI tract into the blood, where they've got options. They can hang out there and get converted to nitric oxide, or they can go into the skeletal muscle, where they also can be converted to nitric oxide. I used to think that nitrate was mainly stored in the blood, that blood was the reservoir, but recent research tells us otherwise. It turns out that the nitrate concentration in skeletal muscle is much higher than that in blood. Adding to this, muscle nitrate stores are exquisitely sensitive to high dietary nitrate supplementation and deprivation. This means we can build up our muscle nitrate reservoirs quite quickly. We can get from deficient to full in only three days. We're learning that nitric oxide has many different functions in the tissues besides just vasodilation. Along those lines, besides being stored as nitrate and nitrite, nitric oxide can be stored on the hemoglobin molecule of the blood. In doing so, nitric oxide gains an additional function. It actually controls blood flow to certain tissues. This does get a little sciency, so put your science hats on and stick with me for just one moment and it'll all make sense. Our red blood cells have hemoglobin molecules on them. NO can bind to the hemoglobin to form a molecule called S nitroso hemoglobin, or snow hemoglobin for short. This snow hemoglobin molecule is the bioactive form of nitric oxide that controls blood flow to the tissues. When oxygen and snow hemoglobin-laden red blood cells reach the microvascular arterioles and capillaries of the tissues, like the muscle, hemoglobin senses how much oxygen is present. If the oxygen level in the tissue is low, the hemoglobin will release both oxygen and snow hemoglobin. 
The oxygen nourishes surrounding tissues, and the snow hemoglobin signals for the blood vessels to widen, which results in an even greater blood flow and oxygen delivery to the tissues. It's a genius system. In contrast, when oxygen levels are high, hemoglobin does not release oxygen or snow hemoglobin. There's no need to release all that if the tissues are well oxygenated. Our body will save that resource for another time and another area. So if you look at the big picture, the system makes sense when you consider that the body has to regulate blood flow at the level of individual tissues and micro capillaries. We only have so much blood in our body, like six liters, and our body has to prioritize where it goes. An exercising muscle needs more blood delivered to it compared to a resting muscle. Many have theorized that having enough of that muscle reservoir of nitric oxide will improve athletic performance. Somewhere between 40 to 90% of athletes use dietary supplements. To be honest though, the studies looking at nitrate intake and athletic performance, they're all over the place. Some show improvement in performance, others show no improvement. A landmark study by Larson et al. discovered that sodium nitrate supplementation reduced the oxygen cost of submaximal cycling. Another study showed similar results with beetroot juice. These results suggest that dietary nitrate permits more muscular work to be performed per unit time for the same energy cost. So basically, the efficiency of skeletal muscle contraction is enhanced. Now, when we think of NO production, we often consider its synthesis in the endothelial cells lining our blood vessels. However, our skeletal muscle plays a crucial role in this narrative too. Within these muscles, an enzyme called neuronal nitric oxide synthase, or NNOS for short, is a primary producer of NO. This localized production of NO in the muscles has several implications, from modulating glucose uptake, which is vital for energy, to potentially influencing muscle repair and growth. But the story doesn't end there. Within muscle tissue, there's a protein called myoglobin, which primarily functions to store and deliver oxygen. When myoglobin interacts with NO, a compound called S-nitrosomyoglobin, or snow myoglobin, is formed. This compound is particularly intriguing because it acts as a reservoir for NO, storing it and releasing it under specific conditions, such as during muscle contraction or in low oxygen environments. Now, let's introduce another dimension to this narrative, nitrate. Our skeletal muscles have the capability to store nitrate, a compound that can be a precursor for NO production. Through a series of biochemical reactions like we talked about, nitrate can be reduced first to nitrite and subsequently NO. This provides an alternative and an efficient route for NO production in muscles, especially in conditions where oxygen can be limited. The implications of this nitrate-nitrite NO pathway are vast. Beyond just muscle function and metabolism, there's evidence to suggest that this pathway might have protective effects on the heart, especially against conditions like ischemia reperfusion injury. This is a scenario where tissue, deprived of oxygen due to reduced blood flow, experiences damage when blood flow is restored. In wrapping up, it's clear that our muscles are not just about strength and movement. They are biochemically active. They're their own organ. They're playing roles in the storage and production of molecules that have wide-reaching effects on our health. From the production of NO via enzymes like NNOS to the storage of nitrate and its potential conversion to NO, our muscles are central players in a complex physiological dance. As far as I'm concerned, more muscle equals more nitric oxide storage capacity. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to show us some real support, subscribe. And let me know in the comments below what you are doing to increase your muscle mass and your nitric oxide levels. Until next time, cherish your health and aloha.